September the 18th is the day last year that the world economy almost came to an end. Don't smirk. It's true, Snurdly. That's what Konjorski is saying. So he's talking here about Thursday, September the 18th. On Thursday at about 11 o'clock in the morning, the Federal Reserve noticed a tremendous drawdown of money market accounts in the United States to the tune of $550 billion was being drawn out in a matter of an hour or two. The Treasury opened up its window to help. They pumped $105 billion in the system and quickly realized that they could not stem the tide. We were having an electronic run on the banks. They decided to close the operation, close down the money accounts, and n announce a guarantee of $250,000 per account so there wouldn't be further panic out there. Do you remember this? This is the day, I think, that the Atlanta banks ran out of $100 bills. But now stop and think of this. A $550 billion withdrawal from money market funds in one to two hours. I am convinced, and there's one more soundbite to go here, I am convinced that this is what they took to the White House and said to President Bush, we have got a disaster, you have got to get on board with a bailout which came later on in October, you've got to get on board with a 700, the TARP one, uh, all because 550, now what precipitated this? Here's the second Ken Jorsky soundbite. If they had not done that, their estimation was that by two o'clock that afternoon, five and a half trillion dollars would have been drawn out of the money market system of the United States, would have collapsed the entire economy of the United States, and within 24 hours, the world economy would have collapsed. It would have been the end of our economic system and our political system as we know it. We're really no better off today than we were three months ago because we've had a decrease in the equity positions of bank because other assets are going sour by the moment. Now, this is January 27th. Uh, Ken Jorsky is talking about this. And we have to allow, since Ken Jorsky is a Democrat, he's part of the Pelosi team, we have to allow that some of his comment here is being flavored when he, when he ends up by saying we're no better off today than we were three months ago. Some of this is obviously oriented toward panic and getting people to go along with the bailout today. But let's leave that aside because that's traditional Democrat power party politics. Five, if, if they had not done that, if that $550 billion withdrawal in an hour or two had not been stopped, if they hadn't closed the windows, he says that $5.5 trillion would have been drawn out of the money market system of the U.S. Now, when I hear money market, you know, I think of... Uh, uh, savings accounts, a little higher interest rates than the passbook savings at the old downtown building and loan uh, where people park their money temporarily till they decide where to put it permanently. He says five and a half trillion would have would have uh, vanished from the banking system, would have collapsed the entire economy of the U.S. and within 24 hours the world economy would have collapsed. Now, we got to allow here for some exaggeration. It's amazing. This was said on C-SPAN on Thursday, September, the, or on January 27th, and nobody picked up on a website. We got it from a, uh, a website called LiveLeak. Uh, they were rummaging through things, and they found this. Now, let's assume for a second here that elements of this are true. Let's assume that there was a $550 billion run, electronic run, on the banks, the money market accounts, in one to two hours. The question is, who was doing this? Who was withdrawing all this money? And the next question is, why? And that's where my mind starts exploding. And this is dangerous to have these explosions going this way. Could it have been George Soros? Could it have been a consortium of countries, Russia, China, Venezuela, countries that are eager to have Barack Obama elected because they know that will make it easier for them to continue their own foreign policies in the world. In the meantime, five and a half billion dollars in one to two hours, that can probably be confirmed. The five and a half trillion is speculation based on the rate at which money was coming out.
we could check that the Fed stopped the trading windows. They closed the window. That we know, we do know they were pumping money into the system left and right. And remember when the Federal Reserve loaned elements two trillion dollars, and we weren't told who got the money, and we still haven't been told who got the money. We know that last fall, the Federal Reserve lent two trillion dollars to somebody or a series of somebodies, and we still don't know where it went. But we know last year that we had a crisis on our hands, and everybody was saying, if we didn't do this today, the country was finished. And they got Bush on board, they got Paulson on board. Obviously, this kind of news, if, if, if somebody from the Fed shows up, if Bernanke and Paulson show up and say, hey, we, we, we got a chance here of losing five and a half trillion dollars if we don't do something, I mean, that's got to scare anybody into some sort of uh, action to stem the tide. Fox just ran a piece, by the way, at the, at the top of the hour when this program began, chronicling the history of the bailouts. A year ago, roughly a year ago, the original bailout proposal uh, or, or stimulus package, $56 billion in both the House and the Senate. By October of last year, it had grown to $200 billion. Now we are at a trillion on the stimulus plan, the porculus bill, and now with Geithner out there today trying to con the business community and the investor class, he failed royally doing that. Well, that's his job. He was raised out there. He's out there. To, Obama can con the base. He can con Democrats. He can con the media. He can't con me, and he can't con you. But he can con all these acolytes, these brain-dead supporters of his, and these stupid fools in the media to whom he cannot fail. But Geithner... Geithner sounded like the dog ate my homework today when he went out there and made his speech. He is a little bit uh, like that and a little bit of an authoritarian. And he said, by the way, getting federal money is not a right, it's a privilege. And by the way, he's, we are not shoring up the banks to help the banks. We are shoring up the banks to help you so that the banks will loan money to you so that you will then borrow money. And I think what their ultimate plan here is, their ultimate plan is to get, and they, they're botching it. I mean, I don't, I don't think they know what they're doing here because there's a simple way to accomplish what they want. Because at the end of the day, what do these people want to do? They want to raise taxes. And they can't raise taxes right now. They just can't. They can put all kinds of stealth stuff in their stimulus like this abomination. They've got nationalized health care in the stimulus bill, folks which we shared with you yesterday and has now become mainstream, which again is why Obama doesn't want you listening to me. What they obviously want is for people to start investing. They want the banks to start lending. They want people to be able, they want to raise our taxes. They want people to start generating some income out there uh, so that so that uh, they can raise taxes. Geithner even said today, we are not going to put out the, the, uh, the details of our plan until we get it right. So he gave an overview today. This is a con job. And, of course, the people on Wall Street and in the markets are not being conned. We're flirting here with being down 300 uh, on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Dirty little secret. Obama doesn't mind this at all. Here's a guy last night in his press conference talking about a catastrophe. Here's a guy talking about it could get worse. It's going to get worse even if we pass this. He's out there lying. In fact, the New York Times today has vindicated your host, your lovable and trusted commentator, El Rushbo, by pointing out that I was ready. Don't use my name, of course. But we are nowhere near economic conditions as they existed in the Great Depression. We're not even as bad as they were in 1981 and 1982. And the New York Times points it out here today.